Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today we're looking at customer lifetime value, what this is, and uh, also a really easy way to calculate it in Excel. There's so many formulas that you can use to calculate customer lifetime value and those range from like really simplified that would only work in, in a really specific scenario all the way to really complex uh, formulas uh, and, uh, and uh, even statistical uh, models that would make it impossible for most businesses to utilize uh, because they require quite a lot of specific data. Today I want to share a really easy way to leverage one of those formulas and add a bit of uh, Excel forecasting to calculate your customer lifetime value and uh, save your business a lot of trouble. By the way guys, if you're enjoying the content, thumbs up will be awesome and a sub to the channel will be amazing. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Okay, but what is customer lifetime value? The metric shows us how much value a customer will generate for our business over the period they will use our services. Customer lifetime value is equal to customer lifetime revenue minus customer acquisition costs and cost to serve for services or cost of goods for product-oriented businesses. Let's look at customer lifetime value. If George is a customer for 12 months and pays 100 euro per month, his lifetime revenue will be 1200 euros. But if George, our average customer, sticks around for five years, what we can do is apply an average expected growth rate to the annual revenue to project what they might generate for the business. The next item in the equation is the customer acquisition costs or CAC. So we hire an external company to run a social media campaign for our brand and pay a price of 125,000 euro. Tracking the source of our newly signed customers, we can identify that this campaign resulted in 85 new signups for our services. The customer acquisition cost is then the campaign cost of 125,000 divided over the number of newly acquired clients, resulting at 1,471 euro per acquired customer. The last ingredient to the equation is the cost to serve. This is any cost we incur to provide our services or produce and deliver our goods, including production, salaries, shipping, and others. Okay, let's look at calculating the customer lifetime value in Excel. I have a new Excel file here, and uh, let's just go ahead and start building our simple customer lifetime value analysis and calculation. So as you know, I want to add some headers here and uh, I'm going to add five years. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, as we already discussed, we have an average lifetime of a customer to be at around five years. So we calculate this by getting how many years each customer spent with us uh, historically and um, calculate the average from there. So we have the year here, this will be our year zero and five. Let's start with our campaign cost. So we did a campaign, which is our client acquisition costs. We did this in year zero. It was 125,000. I'm gonna format this as a number and make it blue because it's an input. Then we have the acquired customers and those were 85 customers. Copy the formatting from here and we can calculate our average customer acquisition cost, which will be the 125K over the 85 customers. So we have around 1,471 euro um, to acquire a single customer um, out of uh, this uh, cohort of 85 customers. What we need now is the average customer revenue per year. This is gonna start from year one because this is the current moment and this is what we're gonna generate within the first year. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this as uh, 1200 because as we discussed, um, the first year we expect 12 months with 100 euro per month uh, subscription. From then on, we're gonna add our expected growth year on year. 
And uh, from year two, this is 25%. Make it like that. Copy it to the side, 25, 20, and 15. This is the average growth that we've had historically. Again, so to do that, we'll take um, all our customers uh, historically in a similar industry or similar cohort if we have uh, such detailed information. And uh, then we're gonna um, accumulate what they generated in their first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and we're gonna see the average growth and this is what we come up with, and now we can link those be equal to one plus the growth here, roll that forward, and we get our average revenue per year. The next thing we need is our gross profit margin, and um, the, the cost of acquisition is a one-time cost to acquire the customer, but we also have continuing costs serving this customer. So this, uh, this is uh, the cost to serve, or it can be the cost of goods if we're selling a physical product. So for our particular business, we know that our gross profit margin is at 70%. It's an online subscription business, so we have a pretty good um, gross profit margin. It's gonna be equal to this and move that along. And now we can calculate our gross profit. Let's pull that, add some borders, and this is gonna be our average annual revenue multiplied by our uh, gross profit margin. The next thing we need is um, we need to uh, add our customer retention rate to this because obviously we're not retaining all of those customers. Although we have some averages here, we're applying the average growth to all the customers within our cohort and we need to adjust that for our uh, retention rate. So the customer retention rate that we have for the first year, obviously, it's going to be 100% because we already signed those. And then for each next year, we'll pretty much add how many of the customers that enter year two will be left to go over to year three. So this will be 70, 75, and 80. And you can see that this increases a bit. By the end, that's because um, pretty much more loyal customers remain. The next thing we need, and uh, this can also be calculated on historical basis, and the next thing we need is we need our cumulative retention rate, the one that will apply to our um, gross profit. Okay, obviously here is going to be the same. Here is going to be our cumulative percentage rate from the last period multiplied by what we're retaining. Um, and we can see that in the fifth year, we're only gonna retain about 25% of our uh, original cohort. Okay, so now we can estimate the customer profit. You just copy the formatting from here, paste it here, and this is gonna be percentage multiplied by our gross profit. The next thing to add is uh, we need to obviously account for the time value of money. So 1,800 euro in year five are not the same as 1,800 euro right now. So we need to discount those. The way I like to do that is I get the discount rate and in almost all cases, uh, I'll just set up this at 10%, that's a good ballpark figure that's uh, quite popular in, in academics uh, and in, in general analysis. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna calculate a discount factor, which would make it easier so I won't have the, the formulas mixed. This is gonna start from one, which I'm gonna make blue, and this will pretty much be one plus Oops, multiplied by this. Okay, make that a number, and if you just bring it to the side, it should work. So this is pretty much accumulating 
the discount rate year over year, and this is my discount factor that I can then divide by to get the, the, the present value or the net present value. So I'm just gonna name this next column NPV. Let's also copy the formatting here. Okay, and uh, obviously for our first year, it's important to add with a negative sign the customer acquisition cost that we already spent. And then to account for the cost of service, we're gonna be adding only the profit. So the profit here for year one will be this divided by our discount factor. It's gonna continue. And we can see that those 456 estimated profit in year five is actually worth 283 today. So the next thing is to calculate our cumulative CLV, customer lifetime value. Let's give that a bit more distinction. And uh, this will pretty much be yeah, the sum of C25, which I'm gonna lock to C25 and uh, yeah, I need to lock the first one. Okay, so now when I move it to the side, it will move one of the parameters. So this will be C25 to E25, this will be C25 to F25 and so on. As we are considering five years as our average lifetime of value, a lifetime cycle, then this here, the cumulative customer lifetime value for uh, in the fifth year, will be uh, 850 from today's standpoint. And uh, this gives us uh, pretty much what the what is the value that a single customer from this cohort will bring to our business over the next five years uh, from today's standpoint. So we will spend close to 1500 to get this customer on board, but he'll not only cover this expense, he's, he's also going to bring additional value that's equivalent to 850 euro uh, from today's perspective. Okay guys, that was um, my easy approach towards calculating customer lifetime value. I hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.